So, here we are with a standard Word document. Now, many of you might have different word processors to this, and that's one of the reasons why we're wanting to save in rich text format. It's very useful when you're wanting to retain the formatting of a particular document, but you're not sure exactly what applications other people might be using. So, on the course, for example, there could be people who are using Windows, they could be using Macs, they could be using uh, the Linux operating system, or perhaps something which hasn't been invented yet or is even more exotic. The point is that uh, we need a common way to be able to see documents in the way that they're intended, and the solution to this is rich text format. So, as I mentioned here, uh, what I have is a document which I have prepared in Word, and this is Microsoft Word 2010. Now, at this point, once the document's ready, what we do is move to the file menu on the top left and if we click that we'll get a variety of options and what we want to do here is use save as so if I just click that once I'll then get a little dialog box which will open up and present me with some options now the important thing here is to look at the save as type drop down menu and if I just click that here that will bring up a range of options as you can see Word 2010 has got a whole smorgasbord of options. Um, other things we might want to consider are plain text, which gives a very raw format output with zero formatting, but it's very small and again is uh, compatible across platforms. But rich text format is the one we want here. So I'll just use that here as the server's type. And as you can see, what's changed there is the suffix to the uh, document that we'll be saving. So rather than uh, standard word doc or docx what we now have is a, an rtf file all we do now is save it somewhere standard so uh, what i'll do is i'll just save it to my desktop you can save things where you normally save them and then just click save and that is as simple as that we now have a rich text format document all you need to do then is to uh, go to the dialog box when you're creating a blog post and you need to insert a file so I'll just quickly demonstrate that here on a VLE course here we go we're uh, in week one of a course I'll just enter a blog site so here we go this is the uh, introductions so I'll just enter that as usual this should all look quite familiar to you and I'll create a blog entry as usual uh, what I do is give it a title and then move to the uh, entry message section and here all you need to do is click on the little paper clip to insert a file and what we want to do here is browse my computer and what we're doing is looking for the file that we've just created so if I click that I'll get another dialog box and if you remember I saved my file to the desktop so if I click desktop and have a quick look through there we go we can see the file I just created so I'll click that here is some sample text and click open. This will just confirm that uh, that's the name of the link that I want, which it is. So at that point, I will just click the submit button. And as you can see, we now have a link to the file that I created earlier on. And that should be compatible across platforms. I'll just save that um, entry as usual. and you can see the VLE is now refreshed and we have a new blog entry called here is some sample text and if I click that now that should open up in my word processor of choice so I'll say I want to open it and there we go we can see the file has been opened 